let's stand to our feet this morning. Come on. It's a little bit too somber in this place. We got to wake up a little bit. The sun is out. We beat the rain. Come on now. Hallelujah. God, the storm passed us up. Listen, we got work to do. We've been off for a little too long now. We got to get back out to the park. You got to prepare your hearts to receive this morning, your minds. You ready for the word? Because, listen, you don't know. Some of you, you're new, so you don't know. We got a really, we got really good gifts in the house. We, we, we not only have Rick Reyna, but we have his wonderful, lovely wife, Nettie Reyna. And they are two, but they are not just two. They are one. So there is no Rick without Nettie, and there's no Nettie without Rick. They are a team. And so we are thankful for them. I'm thankful for them. They've been um, a great blessing to our family throughout all the years. And we love them very much. And we know God has truly just blessed them, opened many doors for them over the years. And we're thankful that they are back with us. And I'm thankful that we're going to be out, out, out outside these walls ministering and loving people. So I'm serious. Listen, prepare your hearts right now. Prepare your hearts to receive. And then listen, and prepare your hearts to sow. Would you do me a, a favor? And let's welcome Rick and Nettie Reyna to HD Church. Come on. Thank you so much. You may be seated. It's an honor to be here. And it's, uh, you know, we've, been, we've known the Waddeses for our, we were dating. Rick and I were dating. I think um, Pastor Eric and Chris were little boys, toddlers, when we met you. So it's been a long time. So it's nice to see from generation to generation the gospel being preached and the ministry being fulfilled. Uh, it, it's, it's an honor to see Pastor Eric up here. Like our, our son also is Pastor Ricky. You know, he, he pastors um, my parents' church, and my parents are loving it. You know, and it's, it's a joy to see. It's a joy to see. Um, I'm just excited for the faithfulness of God. Uh, I, I've, we've served God, well, our whole marriage, but I've been serving the Lord for over 40 years. And I just, I love the Lord. I wouldn't have it any other way. If you're having issues, if you're having trouble, um, let me say something. You're doing something wrong. No, really. Because if you're, I mean, you might want to check yourself out. Maybe you're not attending church as you should. Maybe you're not using this, the word as you should. Because God is faithful. Yeah, you might have some things come up, but you attack it with a word. You attack it with a word. You use your faith and you believe the word of God. Because we have seen God faithful all these years. Even through different things you might be, we have gone through or different things. But he is faithful. Yeah. He's so good. He's so good. I just want to encourage you to stay in church. I always say this to my family and to everybody I meet. Stay in church. Church is a part of the balanced family life, and you have to be a part of church. It is the Christian duty to be in church. There's nothing like, you know, when you go away on vacation, and then when you come home, you say, oh, it feels so good to be home. Well, that's how church should be. When you're not in church and you come to church, you're like, oh, it feels so good to be home. Because you're going to hear a word that's going to build your faith, that's going to take you up to another level. So there's nothing like being in the house of God. I love to be in church. Well, we're excited to be here. And today when we go to the park, I want to, uh, I want to encourage you to be um, people-minded. When you're out there, be people-minded. People are hurting. People need Jesus. People need answers. People need hope and that we bring them Jesus. So be people-minded. Amen. Uh, we love you, all you, past, um, Pastor Kathy. We love you, Pastor Eric, your amazing dad right there, Pastor Joe, Papa Joe, Papa Joe. We love you all. All of you, we love you. And thank you for having us. It's an honor to be here. Uh, it's just, you know, um, Apologize, Rick. But um, um, I think of it's important to honor, I, uh, you honor your elders. Every generation coming together. Pastor Eric, you have, you know, Pastor Kathy. Yes, you're the pastor. But it's so good to see people honor your elders because we need each other. There's wisdom in each other. We need the elders and then we need the younger because we come together. So continue to keep reaching Delano as a team, the elder and the younger and the middle and in between because we all need each other. Amen. God bless. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to pick up her love offering. Amen. 
So good to be in the house of the Lord. I'll tell you, I'd rather be in God's house than the local prison. Amen. I'd rather be in God's house this morning than in the local hospital. I'm telling you, being in God's house, you will be refreshed. Amen. So good. Somebody say, so good. Pastor Eric, this stage looks amazing, what you're doing here. It's good. I know the Lord is well pleased. Amen. He's well pleased. Thank God for what Pastor Juan did. Thank God for what Pastor Kathy did. But you better get yourself a pair of running shoes because Pastor Eric is taking us to a new place. Amen. A new place that you've never been to. Amen. Amen. I feel like preaching this morning. But you know, we haven't been here for three years, so I'm going to preach a three years message in around 30 minutes. Hey, uh, so we've been coming here. So me and Eddie just celebrated 38 years of marriage. So we met Pastor Juan and Kathy probably 40 years ago, 39. We were dating, and I never forget. I said, wow, a Mexican preacher. Wow. He, you know, um, I always think about that. Remember when we had Pastor Juan's going home celebration here? And I remember when I, I had the honor to come up and speak for a few minutes. And I looked around. I said, all you white folks in the building... You're happy because you have Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savelle. I said, all you black folks, you're happy because you have Creflo. But all, all us Latinos are happy because we have Pastor Juan Juarez. Amen. I never forget that. And I meant that. He was on TBN. Huh? He was like, I want to be like that man. Hallelujah. He rides a Harley. He has a little tattoo right here and right here. Man, I said, I want to be like Pastor Juan. All right, before I get going, so we've been coming here now for many years. And then we've been bringing a singer for many years. Nettie's little sister friend, Cine Gonzalez, she's been coming, singing here for 30 years probably. She hasn't been here for the last couple of years, but I called her the other day. I said, hey, we're going back to Delano, old school. I said, you need to come with this. It's not easy for her because she leads worship at my son's church. But this morning, Pastor, I mean, Francine Gonzalez is going to come up and sing one song right now, but she'll be singing at the outreach. Francine Gonzalez, come. Amen. And she's engaged now. Her fiance, Taylor, Tyler. Stand real quick, bro. Amen. He's the blessed one. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Um, it feels so nice to be here. I mean, it's been years. I don't think I've been on this stage for like years. But um, God is so good and he's so faithful. You know, if we just never give up, I think, you know, like God promises to be there for us. But, you know, it's up to us. You know, are we going to stay with the Lord? When we have a hard day, when we go through something that's devastating, are we going to stay with God? And I think that's really the key as a believer. You know, we're called to, to keep running the race, keep going, no matter what. No matter what, because we're not promised, you know, we're not promised tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. But if you have God, you have everything. That's all you need. And I just want to encourage you guys to keep going forward because, like Nettie said, God is so faithful He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promises. And he'll be faithful to you because he loves you that much. And I just want to bless you with one song. And um, it feels good to be here. Um, I do miss Pastor Juan. Um, such a great man. Everything I can think about him is so, is so pleasant, so nice. And, you know, and I'm just glad to be here and see some of familiar faces again. So um, you can go ahead and start the song.
go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born shepherds kept the silent flock by night behold throughout the heavens there shone a holy light sing with me go tell it on the mountain over the hills and Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. born. Yes. Jesus Christ is born. Oh, yes. Yeah. Lay in a lonely manger Our humble Christ was born And God sent us salvation That blessed Christmas morn Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born that jesus that jesus that jesus Jesus Christ is born. Oh, yes, he is. He's born for me. He was born for you. Yes. God bless y'all. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I believe this morning I have a word from the Lord. You know, today as Pastor Kathy was talking about us going back to Cecil Park, the honor to be able to walk in God's number one desire, the Great Commission. You think we're excited. The Father is excited that today... At Cecil Park, he himself has an opportunity to receive new sons and daughters. I believe today when we got up, God was already up having a good cup of coffee. Saying, today, I get to touch people's lives. Today, I get to heal people. I'm telling you, God is excited about the outreach today at Cecil Park. If God is excited, I'm excited. You know, I, I don't know who made this little logo back here, but you nailed it. You know how Brother Jerry Savelle is known for favor? Brother Copeland's known for prosperity. I'm known for rally. Let me tell you. When I seen that, I said, oh, whoever made that, Pastor, just, you blessed me. I'm in my zone. I'm in my element. Yes. All right. I've been practicing my Spanish. <laughs> I I, I'm ready for this afternoon. 
as Pastor Eric said, come and join us. Come and join us. I know it's Christmas time, and God began to speak to me about the season that we're in. And he began to give me some insight. So this morning, I want to share with you briefly a message that is entitled, We Get to Celebrate the Christmas Gift. So I just want to go through it this morning. I don't want to take too long because we do need to get to the park. But I believe if you would lend an ear, if you would lean in and say, Lord, speak to me, God will speak to you. I believe that in this, in this message, there's healing for the bodies. I believe in this message, there's healing for the mind. I believe in this message, there's deliverance from pressure and stress and fear and anxiety and worry. Praise the Lord. It's Christmas time and we get to celebrate the gift that God gave us all. Amen. The phrase, the gift that God gave us all. We get to celebrate that gift. Amen. But you know what's amazing? If you don't have understanding or insight of the gift, the gift won't benefit you. Right. You know, I think about gift cards. Listen, I'm more into cash myself. I'm into Venmo. You know, I like when people Venmo me. I do cash app, but my wife does cash app. I do Venmo. I like the little sound of Venmo. I like cash in the hand. Gift cards, I'm not too, I mean, I'll take them. But I'm not too moved because you really don't know what's in it. Sometimes, remember back in the day you had a call? When someone gave you like one of those Visa MasterCards, you had a call to activate it and find out how much is in it. How many know that took a lot of time and effort and, and they charged like seven bucks. And if you had like ten bucks, you didn't have three bucks left now because you had to activate it. I'm just saying. How many know we moved on? How many know we're in the HD church now? You got to move on. Turn around and tell somebody, move on. So I'm into the Venmo stuff, you know, you know, I'm into like Zell me because it's like instant, you know. Back in the day, it was Holy Ghost handshake. Just Zell me, bro. Just just Venmo me, Venmo me, you know. <laughs> so you, the gift cannot benefit you. Like my wife said, if you're not walk in a, uh, a successful Christian walk, maybe you're doing something wrong. And, and that is, sounds a little harsh, but the gift should work. The gift should work. But typically, so many people don't know what's in the gift and they, they don't know how to activate it. So someone gave me an Albertson gift card not too long ago. It's been in my wallet for over a year. And I'm going to tell you why. I don't know how much is on it. And so many people walk to church with the Bible. But because they don't know what's in it, what's in it's not activated. Today we get to celebrate the gift that God has given us. Amen. Jesus is the gift that the Father sent us. So let's take the opportunity this year to celebrate it. And I come to help you this morning. Today, today I would like to highlight what's in the gift. Say amen. amen. Today I would like to look at three things just to highlight three things that are in the gift. Number one, sozo is in the gift. Sozo. Sozo is a Greek word. And the word sozo has four meanings to it. S-O-Z-O. Sozo is in the gift. 
So if you open up the gift, if you unwrap the gift, what you're going to find in it is sozo. It's a Greek word. And the word sozo means saved, healed, delivered, and made whole. So when you get revelation of what's in the gift, you'll begin to experience salvation, healing, healing, deliverance, and nothing missing and nothing broken. And once you get revelation of sozo, you'll walk with a little attitude now towards the devil. You'll have something to respond to whatever's trying to attack you. You know, I said this the other day. I was preaching in a church. And I said, I never want to go to bed saying this. Man, it was a rough day. Man, this was a tough day. Shh. Man, I felt like hell today. I felt like someone dragged me through a keyhole. Today was the pits. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have revelation of what's in the gift, sozo, you won't have days like that. You won't experience a 15-round fight with the enemy. Again, what's in the gift, sozo. It's a Greek word meaning saved, healed, delivered, and made whole. Salvation, healing, deliverance, and nothing missing and nothing broken. Now, I want to help you. Now, now, now don't get sleepy on me. Stay with me. I want to help you this morning. I want to help expose and bring some light to what's in this gift that we're celebrating in this season. Say amen. amen. Number two, number two, the good news is in this gift. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Now, the son is the gift, but you, the, Jesus came as God in the form of man, but the man itself, Christ Jesus, couldn't do nothing for us until he presented himself on the cross, then the gift came. Number two, what's in the gift? Good news. When God gave us his son, he gave us good news. Jesus is the good news. What's in the good news? Or what did God send in the good news? I'm glad you asked. Number one, the good news is lost man, you don't have to be lost no more. Sick man, you don't have to be sick no more. And poor man, you don't have to be poor no more. I'm telling you, when God decided to send the gift, the gift had a word inside it, and it was good. I'm telling you, the news that God sent us through the angels was good. Somebody say good. good. I'm telling you, the good news is in the gift. Amen. Has anyone ever been poor before? You know, I remember the day when my children were little and I did not have enough for milk. I remember there was a Christmas one time. It was Christmas Eve. We did not have a Christmas tree. I couldn't get $7. Somehow, some way, I ended up finding $7, and I bought a Charlie Brown Christmas tree in the parking lot of Sears on Christmas Eve. And I threw it in the back of my truck, crying all the way home, saying, God, thank you for my $7. I said the good news is, poor man, you don't have to be poor no more. I'm telling you, when God decided to send the gift to man, something was in the gift. Eric, what's your father-in-law's name again? Ray, you don't have to be sick no more. I don't know about you, but that's good news. 
Has anybody ever been to a doctor checkup before? Now, 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 you know, I don't want to say this publicly, but I just, I'm in my 50s now. And I had to go for that man checkup. Hello. Eric, you haven't gone for the man checkup yet. Let me tell you, the good news is a good opportunity to show up when you go to that man checkup. Amen. All you want to hear is good news. Amen. All you men over 50, and you went to that man checkup. Let me hear an amen. amen. Pastor Eric, you'll preach this message in a few years. Amen. But the good news because I opened up the good news. Come on now. Come on now. The doctor said, I'll see you in 10 years. Yeah. I said, the good news is when you go to court and the judge says, I find this man not guilty. Amen. The good news is when you go to the doctor report and says, well, we didn't find nothing. All right. Amen. I said, but when somebody does not have a revelation right. of the real Christmas gift, on, they won't know what it is to have good news. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, 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 uh, my father had this. My mother had this. My grandma had this. It's in the family genes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the good news is you can get yourself a new pair of jeans. This is a Christmas, Christmas message. Amen. And lost man, you don't have to be lost no more. I said, bound man, you don't have to be bound no more. Nicotine man, you don't have to be bound to nicotine no more. Alcoholic man, you don't have to be an alcoholic no more. Drug abuse man, you don't have to be addicted no more. Pornography man, you don't have to be bound no more to pornography. I'm telling you, it's all in the gift. But if you don't have revelation of the gift... You'll still live like a lost man. You'll still live like, live like a sick man. And you still live like a poor man. You know, I mean, I don't want to get into this. But exactly one year ago, me and Eddie woke up in the morning. And we checked our bank account. It was December 28th. And there was $1.2 million in there. <laughs> poor man, you don't have to be poor no more. I know it got, it got me and Nettie excited. Amen. We get to celebrate this gift that God has given us. But let, now listen, be watchful. Be watchful with, with the enemy. Because growing up, Pastor Kathy, we used to hear things like this. Merry Christmas. Merry meaning joyful and over gladness. Having more gladness. And Christmas, we know, is the word Christ and mas, for all you Latinos, mas, more of Christ. Hey, more of Christ, more glad you'll be. That's what Merry Christmas means. But a few years ago, uh, uh, the political party changed it to Happy Holidays. Huh? Be, be watchful now. They're taking away the word more Christ in there. And remember, the... The more Christ brings the merry part, the happy part. The less Christ takes away the happy part. So they switched it over to happy holidays. But after a while, the political party didn't like that because they had the word holy in there. Now, if you're, if you're like me and Eric, really cool. It's no longer Merry Christmas. It's no longer Happy Holidays. It's now... Happy winter party. Just winter party. We're having a winter party. No more Christmas party. Church is saying, hey, you're going to come to the winter, winter party service? What happened to the Christmas part now? 
I'm telling you, the enemy's plan is still John 10.10 10, to come and steal, kill, and destroy. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the good news. Say amen. amen. Now, I want to give a couple of scriptures before we leave this morning to help, to help us with this. Go to John chapter 3. We're going to start at verse, verse 15. And you're going to see a pattern in here that's going to help us grab a hold of this gift. John chapter 3, starting at verse 15, says this, that whosoever believeth in him... And I want to interject here the gift, Jesus. Whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, the gift, the good news, sozo. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to believe this. And once you believe, believe it, you got to apply it and stick with it. The gift only works if you believe in it. You got to believe that this gift that God sent has enough power to stop every work of the enemy. And if you, let me help you, let me help your believer this morning. <laughs> let me help your believing machine. This is the way I do it. I hang out with other believers, people that believe the word. I only listen to preachers that believe the good news. I don't listen to down and outers. I don't li listen to doubters, unbelievers. Yeah. Just because they're famous, right. it's not going to work. Right. Amen. Come you got to believe this thing for it to work. Yeah. This is how you activate it, by believing. Yeah. John 3.50, once again, it says, That whosoever believeth in him, the gift, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen to this. Your believing will get you past the perishing. Amen. Let me help you with the word perish this morning. The word perish means to come to an end. If you believe in this gift, you'll bypass the perishing. The word perish means to come to an end. To have no expectation in life. To have no future. People that have no expectation, they're perishing. People that, that, that don't believe, they have nothing to live for. They have no future. Now, let me, let me ask all you ladies real quick. When you go to the market, well, the other day my wife sent me to the market. She said, buy me some bananas, some milk, and a few items. So I went to the banana section, to the produce section. And the first thing that I looked for were the, the bananas that were not perishing. The yellow ones, the black ones. Immediately, I looked for the ones that had a future. I bypassed the one that that were perishing. I'm telling you, immediately when people do not believe, they're perishing. They have no future. They have no hope. You know, Pastor Kathy, she said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to listen. I listen to I listen to it. When people speak, I listen. All right. And, and I heard Pastor Kathy said, uh, maybe Brother Rick will share a few things of what God's doing in their ministry. Well, we have a new name in our ministry. It's no longer Rallies for Christ. It's called now Rally Ministry. The reason why is we do more than just rallies now. We do television. We're on the Victory Channel now. We come on three days a week on the Victory Channel. We're literally going into 39 million homes now. We, we, we started making short films. Our short films are now in film festivals around the world, and we're winning so many awards. Amen. We're touching people in other countries every single day now through our short films. Amen. So what I'm saying is, when a, when some, that when a whosoever begins to believe, they'll stop perishing and they'll start growing. Amen. 
A church will perish. They'll have no future. They'll, ha they'll come to an end when they don't believe. Now, if you believe in this, we're talking about the gift. Somebody that believes in the gift has a future. You can see people. Have you ever seen so-called Christians and, and, and they just, man, their, their lives are hard. I mean, you know, they, they, it just seems like, man, like their lives are ne never, never getting better. It's not the word's fault. Because the scripture is saying, whosoever believeth. Listen, you need to get yourself around some, some more radical believers. Some more, some more, some more, some more radical people who are believing God for great, ex mighty exploits in their lives. Amen. 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 Again, verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him, the gift, the good news, should not perish, but have eternal life. Perish means, again, to come to an end. Listen, me and my wife, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this. I declare that we're looking younger and younger. We're feeling younger and stronger. She's getting more sexier by the day. Listen, I believe. A believer speaks. A believer declares. Even when, when, when you have unbelievers and doubters, you'll say it. You'll declare it. I'm getting stronger and healthier. I'm getting wealthier. I'm reaching more people. God's opening more doors for me, more opportunities. I'm becoming more of an influencer into people's lives. Listen, if you don't declare it, I promise you no one else is declaring it. But a declarer is somebody that believes it. Man, I'm trying. I'm trying to move on. We must believe in the gift of God. Simply believe God. I'm going to look at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Or you can say it this way. For God so loved the world that he gave the only gift that he had. Begotten means the only. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, when God decided, to, when he decided to send the gift, he wanted to make this gift a good gift. Now, let me let you in a little bit more of my, 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 my Christmas life. Say amen. amen. So, my kids know this, and my family know this. Don't give me gifts like ties and penitents and sweatpants and <laughs> socks. I'm not, I don't like gifts like that. I like Venmo. <laughs> it was just my birthday the other day. And my kids ready to know. Dad, don't, don't be buying Dad anything at Sears or Walmart or Target. If I need pants, I'll go buy pants. If I need a new jacket, I'll go to Zara or wherever. I'll go buy it myself. But don't be buying me things like that. Venmo me. <laughs> Zell me. Listen, God knew what me and you liked. Before he sent the gift, listen to me, he knew what we needed. I, I'm fully convinced before God sent the gift, through Amazon Prime, he thought about it. He said, what does Pastor Kathy really like? What does she really want? Pastor Eric. I mean, think about it. This gift that God sent us is all that in a bag of chips. It has everything you desire, want, and need in life. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm telling you, this gift has everything you need. You know, so, and listen, this gift is for, for us in every area, too. In every area, this gift, it brushes every area. Listen, spiritually, physically, mentally, socially, financially, family, ministry, business, wants, needs, desires, dreams, goals, and visions. That's what we declare every day over our partners. This gift covers everything. I said there's enough in the gift to cover everything in our lives. Amen. Say amen. amen. Verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him. There's the word believe again. 
There's a rhythm here. The gift is not activated until you believe in it. You have to believe in sozo. You got to believe in the good news. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. This is the word, should not perish again. God is saying this gift can cause you from stop decaying. Let me just help you one more. Can I help you one? Can I help you again? Matthew 8, 17 says that it might be fulfilled what the prophet Isaiah said. That Jesus came to forgive us all of our iniquities and deliver deliver us from all of our infirmities. Do you know what the word infirmity means? It means symptoms of old aging. Jesus, the gift came to deliver us from symptoms of old aging. You're not getting excited the way I got excited. Listen, just because my age, I just turned 58 the other day. Hey, but I don't have to feel 58. I don't have to, I don't have to have arthritis. I don't have to lose my vision. I don't have to lose my hearing. I don't have to lose my hair. See, if you don't look into the good news, the news ain't good to you. Because, see, when when this scripture, Pastor Kathy, when the Lord gave it to me, the enemy was trying to mess with my eye, my vision. Two years ago, I woke up, and I barely could walk. Arthritis attacked my left knee. For one year, I walked like that. See, I didn't come here. You didn't see it. See, you didn't see it. But for one year, I wore one of those those knee braces, those black knee braces I wore for one year. And every day, I put being gay on that leg. I never been and never will be gay. Hallelujah. (laughs) But I wore being gay. Well... Um, but every single day I would declare that Jesus came to deliver me from my infirmities infirmity means symptoms of old aging and arthritis is symptoms of old old aging well one so last December me and Nettie were at an RV park we went to go hear Jonathan Shuttleworth preach in, in Indio and I woke up that morning, my wife said, let's go for a walk. So I put my shorts on, my high white socks, and that knee brace. And I walked out of the RV. She said, you get back in there. You look like an old man with those. Had my shirt tucked in with a big old belt. She said, get back in there and take authority over that knee. You look like an old man. And for one year, I was declaring that I'm free. I went in. I said, devil, enough is enough. I believe that Jesus came. What was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, that Jesus came to deliver me and set me free from the spirit of infirmities. And the spirit of infirmity has symptoms. And symptoms is me having arthritis. So I said, arthritis, I believe the good news. It was Christmas time. I walked in there. I took that knee brace off. I threw it in the trash. Then I got real cool. I untucked my shirt. <laughs> I lowered my socks. And I lowered my, my shorts a little bit. And I walked out of it like there was music going on. I walked out of the RV like that. You know, my wife looked at me. She almost fainted, you know. But I walked out as a new man. Amen. It wasn't activated until I believed it. Amen. I'm telling you. You can live the rest of your life at Rite Aid. If you want. But I'm going to believe the good news. Now don't get upset with me because I believe this stuff. For God so loved Rick so much that he gave us his only gift 
the best gift he could find in heaven. If Rick would believe in my gift, Rick won't, have, Rick won't perish, but he'll have everlasting life. He can experience the good life. I went to have dinner with a pastor. We were at Denny's, and the waitress passed out the menus. And I only could preach to you what God's doing in my life. Say amen. I, I'm, I'm, not here to, I'm not here to do anything else except share the good news that, that he's sharing with me. Well, when I went to Denny's, the waitress passed out the menus, and I got one, and the other pastor got one. And the other pastor, he, he took off his glass. He, he put his glasses on. He looked at the menu. And he took off his glasses, and he goes, here, use my glasses to read the menu. And I looked at him. He goes, I said, I don't need them. He goes, you're going to need them. Was that good news or bad news? I chose to believe the good news. I'm telling you, the gift, the Christmas gift is working. But you got to believe and declare. And my wife said it. It's very hard to believe if you're not in church. When these doors are open, you need to be in the house of the Lord. I'm telling you how it is. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says this. I'm going to finish. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. You got to know that. God did not send this gift to condemn us. Let me give you a little revelation of the word condemn, what it means. It means to set in one to punishment. To sentence one to punishment. God did not send this gift so me and you can live a life of being condemned. The word of the condemn also means to come up short in life. It's not God's will for me and you to come up short. You ever been to the store before and, and, and you were buying something, you just didn't have enough, right. man. Right. Didn't you feel molded? Yeah. <laughs> Condemned? <laughs> Took kick to the curb? Right. right? You ever been somewhere and you couldn't do it because you didn't have the means? Yeah. You felt condemned? Yeah. Your friends were going somewhere and you're like, man. Yeah. That's, ex ex that's not the good news. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. I have made up my life to live a life free from being condemned. Amen. And the word condemn means to be sentenced, to sentence one to punishment. Punishment is not in the gift. All right. Man, I'm just trying to help this morning. Amen. For God did not send... For God sent not his son into the world or the gift or the good news or sozo to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through the gift, might be saved. Yeah. This gift is designed to save. Amen. And remember the word saved here is the same word sozo. Right. The gift is post the gift is supposed to allow us to step into a life of sozo. And the word sozo means to be saved, yes. healed, yes. delivered, and made whole. Amen. I don't know about you, but that's good news. Amen. This gift saves. The plan of God saves. Verse 18 says, he that believeth on him, the gift, is not condemned. I have good news for you. You can walk out of this building not in being sentenced to punishment. That's what you call mercy. That's what you call grace. From this day forward, you can begin to experience a life of the blessing. I don't care where you were born. I don't care who your family history is, who your parents were, or your grandparents were. I don't care what your past has to say. If you believe in the gift of God, the spirit of being condemned has to stop today. Amen. Every work of the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he that believeth not in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Again, there's a word begotten. The only gift of God. 
Say amen. amen. Let me just give you the third thing, what I believe this gift came to do. Hallelujah. Today I want to share with you one more benefit of this gift that God has sent us. It's that Jesus came to save us and deliver us from all the works of the devil. Amen. Now there's something in here. Listen to me. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. When God began to speak to me about this, he said, you need to look at this, son. Listen, Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, no weapon. This gift stops the weapons. I'm getting more excited than you guys are responding. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. I tell you, this is an anti-prosper weapon stopper, the gift. What did you get for Christmas? I got myself an a anti, a anti-stopper, prosper, wep, stopper weapon gift. Where'd you get that on Amazon? Amazon didn't sell it because I believed in the gift. It's in the gift. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue, let me tell you, this gift stops the tongues. People have tongues and their tongues curse. It's the stop cursor weapon cursor stopper. It doesn't matter what you say against me it doesn't matter if you don't believe me what you say won't prosper because in the gift i got a stopper you know starbucks gives you that little stopper in your coffee cup i went to starbucks yesterday the lady must have put it so deep and it went past i couldn't get it out it was like man it's like drinking it side with a little green thing in my mouth because she pushed it too far she didn't hear the little click, click. And she just left it there. I'm walking out. I'm telling you, in the gift, somebody say the gift. There's a stopper. Because people want to stop you through their tongue. People want to curse you. There's jealous people out there that don't like you. They don't like you prospering. They don't like you well. They don't like you increasing. But it's okay because I believe in the gift and the gift will stop what they're saying against me. But no weapon will be able to hurt you. No, I apologize. Let me go. That's the next scripture. I got no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, you shall condemn. Don't mess with me because I'll put a condemned on you, a hurt on you. Man, that's power. Now, this gift is power. Man, I'm telling you, it's better than tamales. Amen. I thought us Latinos had the gift, the mileage during Christmas, but this gift is gift. This gift is dope. Is that, did I say that right? <laughs> and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, you shall condemn. Listen, in the gift, there's power for me and you to stop every work of the devil. This is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. The heritage of the servants of the Lord. Listen, this is our right. Amen. If we believe in the gift. And their righteousness is a me, saith the Lord. God's now saying, if you believe in my gift, I'll back you up. Right. I'll back up what you're doing, Pastor Eric. I'll back up your vision in this church. Amen. I'll back you up. Amen. See, this gift causes me to dream. I wake up every morning on purpose. Somebody say on purpose. And I sit with the gift. 
and I, and I open up the gift, and the gift speaks to me, and this gift tells me, Rick, I want you to increase. I want you to dream higher. I want you to think higher. I, I, want, you to, I want you to declare a thing that is not. It will become so. Rick, the gift begins to speak to me. And the gift says, I'm good and I'm news. I'm good news. And the gift begins to tell me, believe me for this. You know, earlier I was telling you about God wants us to prosper naturally and physically. Say amen. Amen. Well, I mean, I know there's a lot of motorcycle people in here. And you guys know me. I like all motorcycles, any brand. The Lord told me to believe him for a hundred. I'm at 29. And I said, God, why do you want me to believe you for it? Because I'm looking for someone to believe me for a hundred. I said, okay. Well, on the list was an Italian by name, a Motoguzzi. Motoguzzi V85 TT. And it's been on my list. So a year ago, I went to the Motoguzzi shop. There's only a few. And I had the salesman print it out. Give me the grand total, and, and I'll call you back. <laughs> I'll call you back. <laughs> I went home, and I put it on my wall, and I got a blank key, and I taped the blank key, and I said, I declare you to be here in my, in my shop. I declared it for a year, thanking God every day, because the good news said, I want you to have it. Yeah. Right. The good news. And I want you to have it debt-free, too. Yeah. That's even gooder. Amen. All right. Two weeks ago, it showed up in my garage, paid for in full. And I took the key to that thing and I took it to the wall and I put it next to the key that I taped up a year ago. I said, look what God has done. It's sitting in my garage. What? Okay, that might not mean a lot to you, but. It's part of the gift for me. What do you want the gift to do for you? We wanted to be on the Victory Channel. And we got the call this year. What do you want God to do for you? What good news do you want? Your husband to come back? Your kids to come back? Your marriage to be healed? Your body to be healed? What do you want? What good news do you want? I'm just trying to help you this morning. If you believe in the good news, if you believe in the gift, amen. Look at the same scripture, and I'll, I'll finish. Out of the good news Bible, Isaiah 54, 17, it says, But no weapon will be able to hurt you. I'm telling you, your days of being hurt can come to an end today. No more hurt. You will have an answer For all who accuse you. I will defend my servant. Man, we get a defender in the gift. In the gift, there's a defender, Chuck. I will defend my servant and give them victory. I'm telling you, the news is designed for us to live in victory. The Lord has spoken. One of our Christmas gifts from the Father is that the devil cannot touch us no more. And this is something we can celebrate. We have Jesus who defends us and stops all the works of the devil. Jesus came so we no longer have to live in fear, stress, anxiety, sickness, and poverty. God sent Jesus so we can live a life of victory all the days of our lives. I just heard someone say, How come I never have nothing to, you know, Pastor Eric, I don't know if you have, like, give people opportunity to come up and share testimonies, but you should be the first one running up here. You should always have a testimony. You know, my son Ricky, he has Wednesday, on Wednesday he gives people opportunity to do testimonies. And sometimes the devil's saying, stop talking so much. Stop yapping. Devil, shut up. I have something to share. Don't blame me because God is good. That should be you always having something to say about the gift that is good. That's what I meant earlier. You should not go to bed saying, man, today felt like hell. Today was a rough day. Man, what a tough day. Listen, 
that can change today. Amen. Today, open up the gift that is Jesus and begin to declare that this gift is part of my life. Amen. Say this with me today as you stand to your feet, please. I don't know about you, but I preach myself happy. And I'm going to tell you why. Watch this. See, it's not good until it hits your house. So my son, Pastor Ricky, uh, the church blessed him to, to help him go a week away to Cancun last week. You need to send your pastors to Cancun. Amen. So he went. And guess what? Me and Eddie watched the four grandkids at their house. <laughs> now, now, some of you grandparents have revelation on what I'm about to say. When we had our kids, we had grace. But they have the grace. Now, they went to Cancun with the grace and left us there with four beautiful grandkids. And let me tell you, after the four days, when we came back home, my wife said, hey, I need a couple days off here. <laughs> she goes, you need to leave me alone. I said, girl, I haven't touched you for four days, and I'll leave it there. And she said, I need two days off. Don't get it. So she went into our study for two days and watched Hallmarks and all that. But listen, she needed good news. Amen. So I ministered her. I prayed for her. I said, Lord, <clears throat> I declare over my wife that you restore her soul. And I said, Lord, she, she needs her soul restored, her physical body, her emotions. You know, she gave so much, you know, with the, with the grandkids. She, she teaches them. She talks. One's a baby changing diapers and m making macaroni and cheese. And there I am going buying milk. We ran out of milk and diapers. And, you know, G-Rick's now the bus driver, you know. <clears throat> and in my mind, I'm thinking I have a brand new Moda Guzzi in the garage and haven't seen it for a week. But how many know sometimes we need to step up and help the, the, the kids? But, but she needed ministering to. So I turned to the good news. And I began to speak good over her. She woke up yesterday morning. She says, I'm ready for Delano now. You heard her this morning. But because of the good news, my wife is here strong. Matter of fact, I might just stay at the hotel one more night tonight. Amen. Feeling that good. Amen. I'm telling you that Jesus came in a package full with good news. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you need. But I can tell you one thing. If you begin to believe in the, in the gift of God, it will be good to you. Where's Amanda at? Maybe Claire or somebody played the piano if you don't mind. I just, I'm going to do a prayer right now. But I want you to say this with me today. Say, Jesus is, Jesus is. the gift from God. Come on, say it with some fire. Amen. Say, Jesus is, Jesus is the, gift the gift of God. Jesus is, Jesus is the good news. The good news. Jesus, is Jesus is sozo. sozo. I, don't I don't have to be sick no more. I don't have to be broke no more. I don't have to be, no have to be lost no more. Lost. Father, Father, I believe. I believe, I believe in your gift and the, the good news. If you're in this place this morning, just by lifting up your hands, if you're carrying any type of a burden of heaviness, if life has got you down, if life has struck you, and you feel the, the, the pains and, and the weight of this world. And the enemy's trying to steal your joy. He's trying to steal the life out of you. He's trying to cause you to perish. I just want you to lift your hands. And I want to pray for you. I see your hands all over the building. I just want to pray for you. I just want to pray for you this morning. I'm telling you today is your day. I know we're going to minister to those in the park. But let's start here at the house of God. Amen.
Don't be afraid. Lift it up. I'm going to ask everybody to lift up your hands. Lift it up and say, Father, allow this gift to shower me this morning. Allow this gift, Lord, just to reign in my life, Lord. Deliver me from every pain, every struggle, every fear, all anxiety, Lord. Deliver me, Father, from worry, Lord. Lord, deliver me, Father, from the thought I won't have enough for Christmas. I won't have enough to buy everything I desire. Lord, deliver me from uh, the thought of I hate Christmas time. I hate the, the holidays because of what it brings, because I'm lonely. Uh, lift that up to God and allow God to deliver that, deliver you from that in Jesus' name. I declare Merry Christmas to you. I declare that your joy level comes up. That your glad level comes up. That your joyful level comes up. I declare more of Christ to you in Jesus' name. Every, every thought. Every thought of missing somebody. Every thought of maybe something that you lost in the past. Something that was repossessed. Just roll that over to God in Jesus. Maybe you had a house repossessed. Maybe you went into foreclosure. You know what? Just roll that over to God. Sow it as a seed and begin to believe God for a new one. Amen. It's in the gift. I don't know what you need this morning, but just call out to God. Father, I pray for my brothers and my sisters. In the house. You find it in the house. I speak joy. I speak life. I speak encouragement this morning to your people. I speak a, a, a joy in our step, God. I pray that you restore our soul, Lord. Our minds, our feelings, and our emotions. I declare healing over the bodies in Jesus' name. I declare supernatural increase to your finances. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my gift, and I should not want. So, Lord, I pray over my brothers and my sisters. I pray over this ministry that we just don't have to celebrate the gift during Christmas time, but we can celebrate all year long. Why are you so happy? Because I got myself a gift. Someone just gave me a gift. So Lord, we thank you this morning. And I declare, God, we have the gift inside of us that we can go to Cecil Park and bring the gift to the people. Lives will never be the same. We honor you, Lord. And we thank you for your word. And we take it. And we declare and we believe that this gift is activated in us. In Jesus' name. If you believe this, say amen, somebody. I want to thank you, Pastor Eric, Pastor Kathy, for allowing us to come. You know, we don't take it lightly. You know, I know the last two years I cried at this time because I wasn't with you. Just missing you. Seriously, we missed, we missed you guys dearly the last two years. And, you know, it's just an honor to be with you. I can taste those hot dog wieners right now with the cheese inside. And those homemade cookies. We miss you guys. We love you, and we call you blessed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Wasn't that good? The gift. Amen. I appreciate Brother Rick and Sister Nettie. Like he said, we've known each other for lots of years, and um, I just thank God we're still serving the Lord after all these years. Amen. You could be seated for just a moment, and you know what? Could you turn the lights on, please? Thank you. I like lights. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, Brother Rick talked about the gift. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you a scripture out of Ephesians that talks about the gift. Amen. And Ephesians says that God gave gifts to the body of Christ. Amen. Gifts. Brother Rick, Sister Nettie are gifts to the body of Christ. Pastor Eric is a gift to the body of Christ. Amen. And the Bible says that he gave them for this specific reason for the equipping of the saints for you for 
the work of the ministry. Guess what we're going to do out at Cecil Park today? Ministry. Ministry. Don't you feel equipped? Are you uh, just a little bit more? Yeah? Amen. For the edifying of the body of Christ. How many of you feel like you, you understand a little bit more about sozo, salvation, healing? Amen. Um, till we all come to the unity of the faith. Amen. And the knowledge of the Son of God. Amen. This is it right here. The understanding and the revelation of the Son of God. The gift. Amen. That's what Brother Rick was wanting to us to grab hold of is, is that important gift that we have in our lives. Amen. And that's Jesus Christ. So, you know, we, we want to be a blessing because he brought such a powerful word today. And just, just ministering to us. Amen. I believe that um, they are touching lives all around the world. And you know what? Whenever we're a part of that, um, God blesses us for being a part of that. Amen. And we should, we should be excited to be a part of, of uh, rally ministry. I said rallies for Christ, but you're for Christ. So anyway, <laughs> um, and thank you, Francine, for coming and singing. I'm excited for your um, songs out at the park, Christmas songs, and your fiancé, Taylor, no, Tyler, sorry, Tyler, and Brother uh, Minister Ruben. Uh, I met uh, Ruben back in, a few years back when we went to New York uh, to do ministry out there, and he was a very uh, wonderful man, took care of me and Regina, and then he took us to this Puerto Rican restaurant, and we were like, no, you go, you go ahead. <laughs> I'll just have this right here, and you go ahead. So thank you for being here. Thank you for coming out and being a part of that. But if you need an envelope for your gift to Rally Ministries, Rick and Nettie, um, our ushers, our great ushers. Don't you appreciate our ushers? Amen. Brother Frank Galvin has been an usher for a lot of years. Lots of years. Yeah, young. He's young still, right? Amen. Lots and lots of years. So I appreciate that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, get out to Cecil Park if we can get some of the guys out there. We're just going to have a great time. I believe our lights are going to shine brighter than ever. Amen. Pastor Eric, do you want to close in prayer? The sun is still out. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Did you guys enjoy the word this morning? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Did you receive? Yeah. Let's pray. Are we ready for today? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't say yes if you're not going out there. Just, just, just go. Okay. I'll pray and pray for you. But, but hopefully you're going to be out there, right, Claudia? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Just making sure because it's your voice that carries. So i got to make sure that you're saying, yes, you better be out there today. Uh, Two o'clock, but I know we need help um, before that. And so, yeah, 1 p.m., uh, we'll be out there starting to set up. And uh, if you've never been to one of our Christmas rallies, it's a lot of fun. So come on out, join us, and, um, and like I said, prepare your hearts to now sow. We received, now let's go out and sow, and let's love on others. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. This morning, Lord, thank you for um, thank you for the gifts of Rick and Nettie, Lord. Thank you for blessing them. Thank you for keeping them. That your hand has been upon them. You've been faithful to them. You've um, you've stuck with them through every season of their life. And uh, thankful, I'm thankful for them in our lives, HD Church. Thankful for the relationship that we have. Um, it's not just any relationship; it's a covenant relationship, and it cannot be broken. And we're thankful for that, God. So I pray, Lord, for 
uh, your hand to continue to be upon them. I pray for a supernatural increase in their lives over and above, God, everything that they're believing for, everything that they're asking for, God. I pray that you are on it. You are a God that's always on it. And we receive you, Lord. You are a gift. You are an amazing gift. You're the greatest gift that we could have ever received in our lives. And so we thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do today. We pray for souls today, God. We pray for people to come to know you, encounters with you, God. We pray for people to come to know you, Jesus, that their lives can be changed and transformed, Lord. The lost, the hurting, and the broken, we call them out to Cecil Park today, Lord. And we're ready, Lord. We're ready to be used by you. And we pray this in your beautiful name. Amen. 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 We we'll love you guys. We'll see you out there uh, this afternoon.